All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at 11 non-essential items that you're probably spending or wasting your money on. Stay tuned. All right, so there's a lot of things that you could be doing with your money. Of course, uh, investing it or investing in yourself, putting money in things that appreciate in value rather than depreciate is probably the smartest approach, right? If you buy a house, it's gonna appreciate in value. If I buy, let's say, a cell phone, it's gonna depreciate or I buy a car, it's gonna depreciate over time. So appreciation things are usually where we wanna put our money in. However, there are a lot of things out there that are non-essentials that people just spend money on um, that just, hey, it's a it's a blown, a blown financial account or blown money. And that's okay to do periodically as long as you understand, hey, I'm splurging a little bit here and there to make my life comfortable. I enjoy it. I have the means and the capabilities. Uh, but you want to be careful you don't overspend. Uh, and you want to make sure that the other things like your investments are taken care of. So in this uh, segment, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of these things of where people blow more money than usual or the average kind of like non-essential items that people spend money on and maybe some things that may open up your eyes to where you could cut back on some things. Now, a lot of this data that I have here is from uh, USA Today and the uh, latter. So I just wanna give credit there. So let's start out with number one and we're just gonna kind of go in order of average monthly cost or spend for Americans. And that is number one is restaurants. That is the average of $209.38. So uh, you'll notice that a trend we have here is a lot of the foods and drinks are usually very costly and expensive so if you're going out to restaurants in the evening time you know just going out to eat sometimes can cost you 50 to 100 dollars depending on if you're just going one person or two people so again you know just going to a general restaurant for me and my wife sometimes we spend a hundred dollars so going out twice to eat that could be two hundred dollars so at times that could be a five hundred eight hundred dollar month if you're going to that extreme again everybody's a little different the locations different the restaurants are different there might be times where you're spending 20 30 dollars at a restaurant and then you'll be able to go out more often but the point is is on average you're looking at a couple hundred dollars of costs and expenses there okay the next big thing is drinks uh average monthly costs around 188 dollars and 68 cents so this starts to add up and by drinks we're talking about not just cocktail drinks but also coffee drinks sports drinks energy drinks so there's a lot of things there that you could be spending your money on and they start to add up and they are expensive um, I know for me we like juices we like smoothies uh, but now with the kids you know usually we're making our own smoothies because they also enjoy the part of making hey let me put the banana in. hey let me put you know the ice cream in and so they enjoy that kind of uh, mocha shakes mocha drinks uh, but we like to make it now ourselves so if you can cut back on some of that stuff um, and just kind of make it you'll be able to save yourself a bit rather than paying maybe eight or ten dollars for like a fancy drink drink if you make it yourself then of course uh, you'll be able to maybe make it for just a, a couple dollars okay let's look at the next one and that is uh, takeout so you can see restaurants now we're getting into takeout so again very similar in nature uh, it's hundred seventy seven dollars and eighty eight cents that the average monthly cost of that is and um, this could lead to things like McCafe it could also be uh, you know just uh, Chinese food Asian food it could be uh, any kind of restaurant that you're doing pickup on on pickup orders if you were just able to cook a meal on your own you know for five dollars uh, then you'd be able to feed yourself maybe for not just one day but two days uh, whereas at a restaurant it might be like fifteen dollars or twenty five dollars for a single meal uh, or order for one person but as you have like four people, six people, you know, that takeout could be $40, $80, $120. You know, it just varies depending on what you're really uh, getting. Okay, let's look at the next one and that is lunch. So notice the trend here. We're, get, we're getting into restaurants, drinks, you know, <laughs> takeout and lunch, uh, which is another big expense. And it's $173.62. So this is really if you're at work and then you go in and grab yourself lunch so if you're spending twenty dollars then another twenty then another twenty that's three days and you're already at twenty forty sixty dollars uh, and just getting lunch at work so be careful with this lunch factor um, so if you're going out to eat and you're at work at the office and you're getting lunch downtown it can be expensive instead you may want to go ahead and pack your lunch it doesn't cost you that much uh, you know just whip out your sandwich or whatever and you're good to go so it'll save you a bunch of money in the end if you're trying to save 
uh, money for your retirement, you're trying to save money for your investments. It's just definitely a place where you can cut back on these expenses. Okay, another big thing is impulse buys. Um, this could be anything that's wild or crazy that you had didn't plan on or think about. It's just, hey, I just want, I just want it. And that's uh, an average spend of about $108.97. So with impulse buys, it could be just, hey, I love these shoes. I want these shoes. Uh, these shoes are great. Um, and you go ahead and buy it. It could be something as small as uh, maybe a pencil holder or some cool uh, markers, or it could be something as expensive as, ah, I just want a new, uh, new phone. And uh, those expenses can get uh, very expensive because they're just uh, expensive impulse buys. Whereas if you're, you know, you're buying a couple little uh, simple things here and there, it's usually not too bad and not too expensive. But if you're buying, ex you know, costly items, they can really start to add up. Okay, another big thing is ride sharing. Um, if you live in an area where, hey, you don't have public transportation, then you know you might need to ride share a little bit. So on average, people are spending about ninety six dollars and eleven cents in the U.S. And um, you know if you're doing Uber and Lyft, I could totally see it. If let's say you're getting your car repaired and you're doing a ride share, however, you could always ask a friend to pick you up. Maybe give them five ten bucks. Um, you could always you know use public transportation if sometimes you could bring your bike depending on the vehicle you have and ride back or just kind of wait to get your car fixed uh you know depending on what you're using the ride sharing for uh, obviously i can understand certain circumstances where hey i just got to use the ride sharing it just makes sense i'm coming in from the airport but that might be once in three months or something like that but if you're using ride sharing on a consistent basis that can definitely be a problem on these expenses and just continues to add up time and time again so be mindful be careful uh, overspending this because you know a general trip might cost you 15 to 25 dollars um, and then you know you get a couple of ride shares and then you're already at a couple hundred dollars here okay um, grooming is another big thing uh, about 94 dollars and 25 cents uh, one of the cool things about this uh, coronavirus thing that happened is that you know a lot of people had to learn how to cut their own hair I find and uh, me as well I've been cutting my own hair now for a little while and um, you know I actually enjoy the process of it because I get to really save time. So if you're looking at time saving things, you're able to go ahead and now cut your hair. So let's just say I'm looking to film like this week, I might hop in the shower and cut my hair right before and then I'm just right in the shower right there. So I don't have to now drive anywhere. Really, it's just a time saver. That's really the big thing. I don't have to drive anywhere. My car doesn't get dirty on my way back, even though they kind of wash you, it's still not 100%. This way, cut my hair, clean up, hop in the shower, I'm good to go and I'm done. Maybe there's a little a couple of hairs sticking out, but it's not a big deal after a couple of days. It all goes, uh, uh, you know, blends together. So again, but grooming doesn't, it's not just about hair. It's also about, um, you know, your hands, your fingernails, you know, just taking care of yourself, personal grooming. So that can start to add up and be costly. So just watch yourself and see if you can do some basic personal grooming, then by all means do it because it'll save you uh, a bit of money. All right, subscription boxes are another big thing. Um, on average, people are spending about $93.96 per month on these. And I saw even, uh, I believe, episodes on Shark Tank where there were subscription boxes for like socks. Like people subscribe to these things like they pay like $30 a month or $10 a month or uh, $15 a month, you know, it just starts to add up. And if you're, if you got like five or seven of these subscription boxes, it could be a couple hundred dollars by then. So this one, for example, is kind of like creams and, and so on. But, you know, if you have subscription boxes, that's a monthly expense that you're just constantly paying for that you might not even be using the products full fledged. Like, uh, you know, if you go to a store, you buy it, you use it. These, they're coming in and let's just say you get new pairs of socks every kind of, every month for like $10 and you get in like funny socks. Well, after a while, you probably have enough stocks to last you a couple of years. So, uh, but people don't cancel and they keep getting these socks. They keep getting these socks and it just starts to add up kind of a wasteful, non-essential purchase. All right, let's look at another one. And that is cable. Average monthly cost is about $90 and 57 cents. Um, something you want to be careful about. You know, a lot of people are cutting uh, the cord or cutting their cable. Uh, nowadays, uh, you have things like uh, Netflix, uh, Roku TV. So there's many things out there and services, Apple TV, streaming services. But sometimes adding those things in as well, uh, by the time you get a few um, services, can actually add up to be the same cost as cable. So do be careful. But if you can cut the cord and just kind of stay away from that, you'll save a bunch of money. And not to mention a lot of time if you're not watching kind of TV. You'll be able to do things that are more productive in life. Okay, another big thing is online shopping. Average monthly 
the cost is around $84.11. I'm not saying you can't shop online. I'm just saying there's people that are shopping for non-essential items. They're just racking things up and it's like, hey, I kind of need this, but I don't really need it. And you're buying a bunch of stuff and they, it shows up and you're just like, oh, okay, well, it's nice, but it's, it's an easy form of buying things, impulse buys and that kind of thing that starts to add up. So just watch out for your online spending because it can start to add up very quickly. Uh, one big thing that people don't use is gym classes or gym memberships. So average monthly cost is around $72.53. So be careful with these things. Um, you know, if you do use the gym, no problem. It's great. It's healthy. And, you know, obviously personal health is important. But don't waste your money if you're not going to the gym. So if you're paying for a membership, even if it's $60, $100 a month, if you're not going to it, eventually you may want to cut it. Um, obviously you might be in a contract and that could be a real pain and problem. So definitely be careful uh, signing those contracts. You could uh, work out at home to save a bit of money and um, you know do things like running, biking at the house um, or you know around your neighborhood to just build up that uh, workout consistency. And once you have consistency, if you feel the gym is worthwhile, then by all means, go for it and join it because your health is also quite important. There are a few runner-ups uh, as far as uh, non-essential expenses that I want to share with you and that is paid apps which uh, people spend about $23.24, other TV services $23.09, music services $22.41, coffee which is kind of separate from the drinks $20.25 and bottled water at $17.47. So again this data is not from me it's from these other sources I mentioned but these are some interesting things and takeaways so if you're like buying bottled water you could always refill refill that stuff from your tap and save yourself about you know $17 a month if you're doing things like uh, coffee right here again you could save about $20 a month right there so between bottled water and coffee there's $20 $40 and if you listen to the radio instead of music services 20 40 60 so you're up at about $60 in savings and if you don't buy anything on the paid apps you know you're you could be saving a good hundred dollars just on a few of these simple little things um, and in a year's time frame that's about uh uh, you got $1,200 and then taking that $1,200 to invest it, maybe in multiple years, depending on the investments and so forth, you could be at five, dollars $15,000, depending on your length and time frame. So anyways, look at these non-essential items because they definitely can start to add up and dwindle and push down your bank account, as well as your future potential to invest and grow your personal financial nest egg. That's really what it comes down to is if you're looking to invest and grow your money, you're looking to be better off in retirement, you're looking to do smart purchases, smart buys, not spend on stupid things, then these are some things that you may want to watch out for. Again, I'm not saying you can't splurge on certain things, you can't enjoy life, just by all means, watch your expenses. And if you're like way extreme on some of these, then dwindle it down, calm it down, and then go out and uh, you know enjoy life as usual obviously you don't want to be in that boat where it's like a the russian rule of hey don't spend money enjoy life enjoy it make the most of it um, but be careful that you're not overspending on <laughs> crazy amounts of things where it's just blowing a hole in your uh back pocket so anyways thanks for joining me hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next video